Kira, hi everyone. Welcome to the sixth Community Venue Learning Series webinar. And it's really lovely to have so many of you with us on today's call. This has clearly been a really hot topic that people want to hear more about. Um, and today, so today's topic is widening youth participation at your community venue. Um, and this was something that a lot of people have asked us to, to go and source an expert on and, and find because it's what we often find at um, the community venues we work with is that um, it's quite easy to get a lot of senior engagement at community venues, but um, people are really interested in how you bring younger people into those centres and um, offer services and programmes that are going to really, um, you know, give them opportunities as as well. Um, so today our main speaker is uh, Brianna Williams, who is the school's education coordinator and freelance youth programmer at Tetui Art Gallery. And she's got um, lots and lots of useful insights to share, um, including a framework that I know that she's found really useful in how to sort of design and build um, programs and things that will will help bring kind of youth into your centres. Um, we love to have these sessions be super engaging and to get your feedback and your your comments and your questions. So um, if it's your first ever Community Venue Learning Series, just as a bit of an orientation. So um, in the platform we have at the bottom of your screen, you should see um, a chat window. So please um, jump in and introduce yourself, say hi, um, who you are, where you're from and what your community venue is. Um, if you want to ask a question for any uh, for, for Brianna, please do feel free to drop it in the chat and we'll keep monitoring that and make sure that we bring that up um, in the Q&A time. Um, but also as well, we'll probably open up to more of an, an open Q&A after um, Brianna's finished speaking. So um, feel free at any time to turn on your microphone and your camera. So there should be a little block at the middle bottom of your screen that says participate and that will allow you to do that. So feel free to turn on your camera, give us a wave, say hi at any at any point in the um, uh, in the webinar. So let's um, just move this along. So today's session, um, we will do a quick icebreaker um, just to get to know you all a bit and um, get things going. Then we'll hand over to Brianna, who will um, deliver her presentation on youth engagement. And then we'll have plenty of time for Q&A and um, a bit of a wrap up as well. Uh, so I think today for an icebreaker, um, what we're really interested in finding out from you guys is uh, what, how do you celebrate Christmas at your venue? So do you have a, um, a big Christmas party for all your um, regular hirers? Do you, um, do you decorate? Do you not do anything for Christmas at all? Uh, it's kind of getting into that time of year. So what, um, what does everyone do to celebrate? Do you do a gift exchange, a secret Santa? Do you um, have any particular fundraising initiatives or games or quizzes that you play? Um, yeah, how, how do you engage your community at Christmas? So just jump into the um, chat and we'd love to hear from you and any of your ideas. We've got crickets for now, so no one's um, jumping in yet. Any ideas coming through for what type of stuff that you do at Christmas? Um, one of the things that I've seen um, work quite well at um, at venues is to do um, to have like a kind of Christmas uh, uh, quiz sheet that goes around that's either like a picture quiz or is um, a prize draw that can really help um, get people involved, give some people something fun to do. Um, 
and uh, engage people uh, around um, around celebrating Christmas. And um, Tegan's jumped in with Christmas trivia as well. Yeah, love that idea. I think anything that's like a um, something that you can hand out and get people to hand back in is is just a good way to connect with people. And kids Christmas disco, love that idea um, to get people um, involved. Um, cool, and a couple of new ideas just coming in. Oh, holding a maker's market. Yeah, that's such a fab idea, Jago. Um, we've, uh, quite a few of the venues we work with uh, hold regular markets, either for sort of local artisans or food markets or to have food trucks, but maker's markets, particularly at this time of year, can be such a great way to bring new people into your space as well. Um, so and uh, a, a lovely way to sort of celebrate people locally who are you know are making things i'm it's i'm always blown away by how many people are making stuff um and all the local artisans um i think we've just got one more from carmela uh jeremy says i uh, don't have a center but used to be a school teacher so lots of concerts special excursions and cards being swapped oh one of the things that um I used to remember from school days was having um, a, a Santa box where people can send each other cards. That's a lovely thing to do too. Um, so thank you very much to everyone who shared their ideas. Um, I'm just checking on um, whether Brianna is on the call. I know she was um, coming in a little bit later. Um, uh, Brianna, if you're on the call, would you mind just turning on your um, video and microphone? I think while we wait, um, Carmela has a message saying that she's seen a local video host a kids' gingerbread house making session, which is quite cool. Um, I think you must have done that for us Al, last year, I think, for you were holding a team time and you sent everybody a gingerbread kind of making thing <laughs> for everyone to do. Um, and then Jeremy's also added bringing in food donations for those in the community who need it. Um, I know of like heaps of spaces that also hold like soup kitchens and stuff during this time and um, kind of knocking on doors um, for people who really need, yeah, who really need it. Awesome ideas, yeah. Um, Kids Ginger House is such a good one. Um, also, uh, I will apologise. We're just still waiting for um, Brianna to get into the call. I think there's just a couple of technical issues. So before we kick off, for those of you that have joined to sort of learn a bit more about youth engagement, um, would you be able to drop in on the um, on the chat the type of things that you're hoping to learn about in this session um, in terms of at your venues? What what are some of the challenges you face getting? Um, youth programs up and running or um, to get younger people engaging and being part of your of your center or your venue just we've got lots of good um questions and content um uh while we wait for brown to to join and here she is hello everyone i'm so sorry i had a bit of uh internet difficulty <laughs> no worries um i thought i was gonna have to <laughs> keep <laughs> <laughs> I was reaching the end of my chat. Um, so, uh, Brianna, thank you so much for joining. Uh, we've just had a bit of an, an icebreaker around what venues do for Christmas, um, but I will I will actually hand it straight over to you so that people don't have to hear any more of me um, filling content. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, if uh, do do you have um, slides to share, or are you um, ready to um ready to go yeah absolutely should i just get my slides ready and um, we will i've got it up for you soon sorry i was oh perfect yeah no worries so if you um carry on brian i'll put it in for you now awesome thank you um so kia ora everyone um my name is brianna um 
I really sit in the space of youth engagement um, under a few different hats. So I'm really excited to be joining uh, Space to Co for this opportunity and kind of talking through the different elements when engaging with youth, um, because there's obviously different areas, um, problem solving around this and how to connect with youth. So yeah, really excited to be invited uh, and to share this uh, space with you. Um, so really, I wanted to start with a bit of a quote, um, which is just popping up now, which is perfect timing. Yeah, cool. So youth engagement is involving young people in the creation of our own destiny. So I just want that to sink in for a little bit. So youth engagement is involving young people in the creation of their own destiny. So I thought we'd start there and maybe talk about the different areas of that sentence because I think it's a beautiful one. Um, so I think the first part to think about is the word involving. So I've popped there that uh, as a participant or someone who is active, you know, whose ideas and creativity are critical thinking, risk taking and exploration matter. So, you know, we're, we're involving youth, we're getting them a part of what we're uh, trying to achieve. And the term young people refers to um, age, not as a hindrance, but of value. And between that kind of age of 12 to 24, um, with a bit of variance in between. And also the word creation. So there's an action of bringing something into existence that it's not really possible without them. They're the core of, of why this matters, you know, of, of working with them, with connecting with different youth, you know, they're a part of the creation. And lastly, um, their own destiny. So considering that they have a sense of self, they have varied cultures, genders, religious backgrounds, life experiences. Maybe they've got a, a migration experience here to Aotearoa and their family life as well. So really that's kind of in one simple sentence, uh, it kind of summarizes how um, I think of youth engagement with the different hats that I wear. Um, and we'll kind of talk about um, what that looks like in the coming slides. So let's go on to the next one. Now, uh, later on in the resources, you'll see at the very end, um, I've provided where I got this beautiful quote from. Uh, and it is from Joe Higgins, who did a fellowship uh, between uh, Australia and the UK uh, with youth engagement. So it says, unlike school where outcomes are standardized and tested against curriculums and answers can only be right or wrong, pass or fail, these kinds of programs encourage subjectivity, questions instead of answers, which I think is really important, right? Like when we're giving youth an opportunity to engage, we're not saying it's right or wrong. We're getting, giving them an opportunity to explore uh, what kind of questions and answers they want to find out in the world. And we can celebrate their risks and possibly their failures, uh, but at their very best, they offer a safe and authentic space for young people to build communities and a sense of themselves in the world and promote genuine leadership and self-directed learning. So I think this topic really lends itself to um, yeah, some really community building uh, at the core of it, which is uh, what that sentence talks about. Okay, next slide. So effective youth participation has a few key elements. Um, it's really about youth being informed throughout the process of whatever the activity is, uh, being influencing the outcomes of the thing that you're doing, organizing themselves. It's really important one as uh, you're becoming a young person decision-making or being involved in decisions uh, and being involved in follow-up. So it's that kind of entire process that they should be um, a part of really. And I think the real opportunity for young people um, is that they're effectively involved in these decisions um, and that can be quite impactful with their lives in the community that they're in as well. Um, I've just got some notes here too. It's really important for their well-being and their sense of citizenship too. So yes, we might think, oh, getting youth involved is great, but really those key principles you see can have a wider impact as well. Awesome, next slide. 
So I thought um, there's obviously a wide range of areas we can talk about with youth engagement, but we'll start with attracting young people um, to our spaces. So I think just a few key points here and um, Al, maybe you can kind of jump in and answer any questions if they come to um, your mind throughout. But I think this is a good starting point. You know, how, how do we attract young people to our spaces? I think the first question you could ask um, within your space is what can you offer? Um, knowing your parameters and what's possible in a space is a really important one. And I'd also say in line with that, you know, knowing what you can offer, researching is really important. So getting to know your community, you know, are there um, youth hubs around, you know, schools, uh, youth groups, organisations, social clubs, groups of any kind? Um, are there particular hobbies in your area? Um, what's the local landscape around you that you can draw from? You know, I'm calling here from uh, Tamaki Makoto uh, in East Auckland. And if I think about that local landscape, you know, we've got a beautiful skate park out this way, very Curtis. And I know that young people are really drawn to that site. So, you know, I can kind of tap into what's around me and where I know these pockets are um, in order to build a relationship. Also connecting with experts in their field. Um, I come through a lens of uh, engaging with youth through the arts. So um, for us, you know, there's a beautiful um, resource in connecting artists with youth. So maybe there's um, someone in the field that you want to kind of inspire our youth with. So tapping into the contacts you know. And it's all really, it comes down to that last point. So starting a conversation, um, yeah, starting a convo. So it's about relationship building. So as you're approaching groups or starting conversations, it's, it's really about asking those questions about what different groups need. How can you provide them? Um, what are they looking for? What, what can you offer them? Um, all of that, I would say, 90% of my job is really um, about conversations, yeah, and meeting with these different groups to see what they need from us. Awesome, we'll go to the next slide. Um, this might be helpful for different spaces to think about key questions they could be asking. Um, that could be things from offering young people support and what that looks like, you know, why should they be involved in your space? What do you hope uh, that they will offer you? Um, we'll see coming up that they offer a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy, a lot of problem solving skills. Um, how are you gonna make sure their voices are heard? You know, what are they telling you that they need or what they want and uh, how you can provide that? Um, what impact will their involvement have? And then obviously there'll be some challenges and limitations around that space. So figuring out what that looks like for your space um, and how will that inform um, or impact what you can offer young people. So I don't think any, any one journey is gonna be straightforward from the get-go. You know, there are a few questions involved, but um, they're a really good uh, starting point, I think. Okay, next slide. Awesome, I really love this one. It is quite a long one, um, but there's some really uh, heavy words there that I think can um, sink in. So youth have a remarkable capacity to imagine and experiment with new ideas and partnerships and also take some positive risks. Understanding what goes on during this pivotal period of individual development and building programs that can promote adolescence as assets will enable your organization to benefit from teen high levels of energy, creativity and commitment. So really that's saying that we have something to gain, you know, through these relationships and these partnerships with youth. Um, they bring such a fresh energy to a space. So tapping into that, um, we will get a lot out of them as, as a site or a space. Next slide. Um, these here, I'm not gonna read through all of them because I think, um, these points can really matter depending on what space you're in um, more than others. Um, this is sort of the importance of uh, what 
youth can get out of working with different spaces and organizations. Um, I think what's really important is youth are at that age level where I said 12 to 24. Um, they're at that really important developmental stage of life where they're moving from childhood to adulthood. Um, and so when they're approaching spaces for programs and events and activities, they're really um, forming a sense of self and belonging and well-being, um, as well as interconnectedness or interpersonal skills. So I think that they can get a lot out of these opportunities as they're becoming adults. Um, also just being offered a safe space. You know, I think with the conversation of mental health at the moment, um, you know, offering youth a safe space is, is just a key one. You know, you might approach these different youth groups and they go, we just need a space. You know, it might be as simple as that first as a um, beginning part of your conversation. You know, they also then can uh, develop amazing leadership skills, self-directed learning. You know, there's a whole variety there uh, in that list um, that youth can get out of it. And I think on the right hand side, you know, we can get a lot out of youth. Um, there's an endless list, but I've just put a few uh, key factors that I think about every day. Um, they bring new energy and thinking. Um, so that energy, the creativity, their commitment to projects um, can invigorate us and inspire us. I think um, I'm really inspired by the, the young people that I work with, and that's a big part of um, why I do what I do. Um, they can add value to what we're doing. Um, and that's really important for the other relationships we have as venues or organizations with others. You know, them saying that we're working with youth is, is uh, something of value. Um, decision making, they can contribute to changes in society as well, which is uh, a big one. And youth participation uh, enhances relationships with young people. So if you're starting your first relationship, for example, you know, uh, once you have a good connection, the possibilities are kind of endless in terms of, um, you know, the fact that you're willing to work with young people. Yeah. Next slide. Okay, this is um, again from that beautiful resource that I've linked at the very end um, about youth-led engagement. And again, I've said that we're coming from an arts lens, so this quote is very much about that. Uh, so Joe Higgins says, I've always held the enthusiastic belief in arts capacity to negotiate and inspire new ways of understanding about ourselves and the world around us. So really, in my role when I'm working with youth, it's through the lens of the arts. And the arts that we deal with here uh, and the organizations that I'll talk about, um, the core of what we do in these art spaces is connecting with people. So these topics will uh, reflect to a variety of life experiences. So really through art, it's kind of a tool for us to connect with other people, um, youth being one of them, you know, understanding who we we are and who we want to be and what has happened in our life so far. So maybe a few of the examples I'll show you today is through their arts uh, focus, but really um, it's there to inspire us um, and to guide us through the way. Next slide. Okay, so the first hat. Um, I wanted to give you guys some examples of engaging programs because I guess uh, a really important step is uh, where do we start? You know, we've talked about the kinds of conversations you want to be having uh, in the community, but really tangible examples of programs kind of helped us figure out, you know, what pockets of youth that we really want to build uh, meaningful relationships with. So um, I'm going to talk about one hat that I wear as a freelance youth programmer. So this is going into different community facilities um, and dealing with the challenges they have in terms of connecting with their content in the building and how do we get youth uh, feeling comfortable in that space and eliminate barriers of art maybe being inaccessible. Um, so the two examples there are through storytelling um, with Samoan dance and also with Samoan art. So I'll be talking to um, those examples first to kind of figure out ways that we can engage with programs uh, with youth. Okay, so it was a beautiful project. Um, the Gus Fisher Gallery is a community venue 
um, and an art gallery, public art gallery in the city in Tamaki Makoto. And there was a beautiful exhibition uh, on display recently called Creation Stories. And it had two curators, Simon Denny and Karamiya Muller, um, who were looking at storytelling. And it was quite a complex show, um, not so much complex for the art scene or those used to these kinds of um, concepts, but we were looking for ways of engaging with youth at the core of who they are. We found that there were beautiful themes like storytelling, um, connecting, fucker papa. And so for us, when we're thinking about how do we build a program, um, we started with those really loose themes. Um, the artists um, and curators involved, Simon and Karamia, realized that they had a connection with Samoa back in their own uh, whakapapa papa genealogy. Um, so we thought that Samoan storytelling might be a way that we can connect with youth, knowing that we have a huge Pacifica community here. Um, and maybe we could offer something um, to this particular um, you know, culture uh, in Auckland and let youth come in through that lens. So um, you can't see her name there, um, apologies about that. Uh, but Tuila Hughes is an amazing uh, PhD candidate who is studying uh, her, her own exploration with Samoan dance uh, as a Pacifica artist. And so we invited her in um, to kind of experiment with the ways we can move our body to tell stories. And we thought this was a really beautiful starting point for welcoming youth into the space. Um, so coming to an art gallery, um, but also exploring that through movement. We might not be artistic in terms of making art, but we can tell stories in other artistic ways. So we connected with, uh, this was our group, the, a schools group, and it was a Samoan bilingual group. Um, so we actually invited them in thinking, you know, we have an opportunity to learn too from these students, um, but maybe there's something Tuila can connect with them on a really interpersonal level. Um, so that was the first part of that program. And then we've also got uh, storytelling through, oh yeah, Sorry, this is also a resource that we created after. So we did um, talk about a little bit about the process, you know, thinking about the concepts first, you know, the, those really um, loose concepts of how youth are going to come into the space. Okay, and then we did a bit of a um, ideas uh, session and thinking this there's some real meat to this project. You know, we can we can learn from youth here, but we can also invite them into the safe space and connect through. Um, the arts. We did a bit of outreach to those Samoan bilingual units in Tamaki Makoto. And then after the event was delivered, we created this resource. So there's a lot of steps in terms of this relationship building. Um, and this resource was us, um, our way of really keeping connected to the school. So they might share this uh, with other learners at their school. They might take this resource to um, other areas of their community. It doesn't have to stay within school, but it kind of summarizes, you know, the experiences um, of us learning from Twila through movement and through those Samoan ways of storytelling uh, with our body. And then this is the other part. So it was uh, exploring storytelling through Samoan art uh, by an amazing emerging artist, Jasmine Tuia, uh, who is also a uh, Samoan artist here in uh, Tamaki Makoto and that piece you can see in the background gosh it's so beautiful it's uh, 10 meters long 20 meters long um, 20 meters long and it's a siapo so it is uh, a Samoan form of art making now the black um, areas you can see on there is, is Jasmine's work herself and she explores mark making and making maps of um, her journey and where she is from in Samoa. Now, again, we invited uh, youth into the space to think about how they might engage with this idea. So it was like using dance um, as a method of connecting, and this is through the art making. And they added their own stories actually onto Jasmine's map. So we, were, uh, we spent the session really learning about them. Um, and what we got out of this from this group of youth was that the teachers have known their students for the last four years at least, 
but the teachers were learning so much more about their students in the session that, that what they had had before. So really these conversations were just facilitated through the mark making, through the art itself. Um, but the teacher said it was a really powerful experience. So um, the art was really just a tool for us to um, share the ideas in the exhibition. And we made, again, a resource just to keep connected with them. Um, they might share that with other uh, students in their kind of sphere of learning. Um, and it just kind of reiterated um, what we explored and what we learned from Jasmine as well. Cool. So really, that was the first um, example of how you can work with youth if you're coming from this lens of uh, developing something for the first time, uh, connecting to ideas within a space um, and using tools of arts to get your students um, or learners or youth uh, involved in a hands-on workshop, I guess you'd say. We did have to seek funding for that, so I did want to be um, quite transparent about you know, the cost factor involved in various programs. So we did seek funding and the Goethe Institute kindly kind of helped us deliver this. Um, so we were very lucky. Um, Skate Out East is another example that I want to talk about. And it's through the lens of being an arts broker. So we're, we're really um, workers of support when creatives want to create uh, a, a program or an event for their local community. So we help them with funding in the building. Um, and we actually delivered this a couple of days ago uh, throughout the weekend, um, but I thought it was really fitting for this theme of uh, widening youth participation, especially in the community. Um, and then we'll talk about the last project, which is the Aroha Arts Project. So. Let's jump on to the next slide. So this really was a beautiful um, project. Uh, we'd been approached by a lovely creative called Lucy Blaze, who is very well known for teaching youth and um, women how to create designs that express themselves on skateboard decks. Um, we thought we'd love to have this happen in East Auckland. We'd love to support her. Um, so we delivered this opportunity, or Lucy delivered this opportunity, sorry, um, through Arts Out East, through the funding. And um, she was very confident in that session, you know, the, seeing youth, um, their parents actually had enrolled them for, for this workshop that happened during the weekend. Um, and Lucy really worked with each and every one of them uh, to figure out their personalities and to see how they can express themselves just uh, on the back of a skateboard deck. And you can see in that picture there that uh, there, there's varying personalities and um, techniques and imagery, um, but this was really a way to hear from youth um, who they are and how they see themselves reflected through the subculture um, of the skate scene. And if we jump to the next slide, yeah, so this was the second part. Um, so as brokers, we actually connected Lucy to um, Border Town, which is a skate shop here in uh, East Auckland in Botany Town Centre. And they were incredibly generous, a retail store, saying, hey, we know you've got the decks, but let's give you the trucks and the wheels, everything involved in actually building uh, the skateboard. So Lucy did the painting session at the beginning. And then we really um, connected the youth to um, Border Town to facilitate learning how to build them and then actually learning how to skate them. So this is outside the Ormiston Activity Centre, so a community facility again here in Tamaki Makoto. And uh, youth, you can see they're skating around and learning how to skate from the Border Town team. Um, so yeah, again, through the arts, they were learning how to paint, learning how to express themselves, but really it was an opportunity for them to ride and be physical uh, through this participatory program. And that was really great. You saw different um, areas of their personality uh, coming through in those two different sessions and through these different personalities. Um, yeah, that was a really beautiful one that happened over the weekend. And so we just spent the afternoon kind of skating once they'd created this thing uh, as well. And 
through another lens. Um, the third hat that I wear uh, is as a um, LEOTC coordinator, so an arts educator at Te Tuhi, which is the um, contemporary art gallery in Pakuranga in Tamaki Makoto. And the Aroha Arts Project was a really beautiful uh, community participatory um, uh, activation uh, by the Auckland Arts Festival. So they put it out to the universe and to Auckland specifically in 2020 that, hey, um, the theme this year for the Arts Festival is Aroha. And so we'd love the uh, community to make garlands. And these garlands uh, represent love and friendship and connectedness. So uh, through Te Tuhi and through the hat of our education um, uh, system, I guess we've got here, uh, opportunities here, we actually thought a nice way to engage with youth um, was to connect them to different artists. So this is the first kind of iteration. And garland was a loose term uh, that we got the youth to decide how that looks. So um, there wasn't kind of a set uh, outcome for us. So we were really there to uh, be the bridge between a creative who's practicing and showing and really engaged in creativity and then the youth. How would they interpret that? How can we show love through making? How can we um, create friendship? So uh, with Wai Ching Chan, uh, we got youth to, they, well, they decided actually <laughs> that, that they made a giant friendship bracelet. So this is a group of about 200 youth um, and they decided through weaving and knotting and tying, you can see the variation of shape. Uh, every personality was different, um, but coming together, they made this really large piece. Uh, later on, we'll see how that comes together for the larger uh, installation, but it was really neat to see the problem solving and the uh, interpersonal skills, the communication, the leadership coming out with these youth through this one activity. Um, I had sourced a, a range of materials to kind of facilitate the conversation. So we did decide on, you know, setting the parameters as a rope, but really the youth kind of drove, um, you know, how they would turn this into something with wise help. So it was really beautiful to see that learning happening between everybody, you know, um, the artist learning from the youth and the youth learning from the artist. It was a very collaborative uh, approach. And we've got another example. So this is uh, inspired by Karen Rabato. So she was our second artist on board for um, this kind of participatory workshop. And we taught youth how to weave. So that simple method of weaving. And this was incredibly large. I think we ended up making about 50 meters of um, woven materials. And again, you can see the intensities are really different just in that one picture. So again, quite a collaborative approach between an artist and youth. This is probably a group of 250 youth throughout the day. Um, so really Karen was there to provide her knowledge, but again, that collaborative approach really allowed for learning uh, throughout all areas and and youth seeing how they can, um, yeah, connect to this idea of, of aroha, a simple one, you know, we can help each other through this technique or we can share our knowledge or we can listen to what the other person has to say. And in the end, they make this beautiful uh, long piece of, of woven material. And uh, the last artist, John Johnson, uh, we <laughs> inspired by his practice. He's also in Tamaki Makoto, these uh, artists all of are from here, are living here. And he has quite a resourceful practice. So he actually brought a, a bunch of materials we could use. So you can see straws and elastic bands there. Um, we also had, that's what we have, oh, rubbish bags that we ended up plaiting. So he had this really open-ended um, approach for them to, or a strength-based approach really. So uh, learning about their strengths in this group of youth and, and getting them to tell us what they want to make. Um, so this group here, you can see they decided to uh, tie the straws together. And again, this was a group of, I think we had two or 300 youth um, for this activity. Um, so obviously a larger scale project, um, but, but the connecting the artist to the youth was a really powerful one, connecting an expert um, 
with this youth uh, was a really impactful one. Um, and we might look at the next slide just so you guys can see the impact. So uh, the Auckland Arts Festival used what we created um, and turned it into a mural. Obviously, there's other parts of the community that um, fed into this. You know, there's other creations out there, but uh, obviously there were huge numbers involved in this. So a lot of what you see is is what we helped participate, but it was it was all through the, the lens of what the youth wanted to make and how they felt uh, they were being represented through Aroha. Um, so that was a really beautiful uh, and impactful, really meaningful um, activity. I think um, I'm conscious of time, <laughs> a lot of talking. Hopefully you're not sick of me yet, um, but uh, important consideration. So I've, I've said strength-based programs here. Um, and that really is programs that identify the strengths and skills and interests of the youth involved. Um, and there is a bit of a, a write up there. I've added the reference uh, if you wanted to kind of read more about that, if you're not sort of aware or um, used to working with strength based programs. Um, it enhances life skills. So the critical thinking involved, the problem solving, uh, communication required. And it's really about meeting and, and being in the space with youth to learn what's going to help them flourish um, and using their ideas uh, developed uh, through the purpose of empowering their ideas to be heard. So you can see through, especially through the Aroha project, we had a loose parameter of what we hoped would happen, but really they drove um, all of that uh, and felt really empowered after. Um, and offering variety, you know, so teamwork, uh, communication, creativity, self-expression, you know, those really foundational areas uh, as someone who is young. Um, other things to consider, so mental health, um, I think it's a big factor at the moment, you know, um, being aware that mental health will fluctuate for everyone. So, um, yeah, just, just providing a space for that not to be 100% perfect. Everyone's gonna come with their own kind of background. Um, so just allowing space for people to turn up and be, you know, if, if that's what they've chosen to do. Um, I also wanted to talk about barriers, you know, so for youth, there's obviously some barriers that play here. So I'm just gonna read a, a few that come to mind. Um, so barriers could be youth that haven't participated in anything before, you know, they might be nervous um, and it might be kind of a, um, scary experience, so that might be a, a hindrance if you like. Um, if programs can be free, I think a lot of what I try to build is a free experience because eliminating those barriers mean you might get more participation. Snacks, transport, um, you know, barriers of not having enough time as a venue. You know, we want to be able to commit and build a relationship. So, you know, can we eliminate that barrier? Um, language and cultural barriers and yeah, other partnerships with youth organizations. So the more we build these up, um, these relationship with uh, young uh, youth-based organizations, uh, the more those barriers will uh, be eliminated. And seek feedback. So ask youth how they found the experience. Um, we're really keen on seeking feedback to know if they enjoyed what they're doing um, and, and what they fed into different programs. That's a huge one. And we learn a lot from them. You know, it might not be perfect the first time around, but we grow. And I think that's really important to be honest about that and keep the connection going. Um, I think we don't want to be tokenistic in these approaches we want to uh, we want youth to feel a part of their community right so um what what else do they want to explore how else can we support you i think conversation uh is a really important part of keeping that relationship going okay no no i've just put a few here because um some of them might be quite obvious but you know discrimination or being unfriendly to youth you want a really personable approach um really friendly, really open, um, ignoring young people's uh, cultural beliefs and values, you know, a, a space of openness uh, and, and transparency. I think, you know, seeing the value in who they are is, is a huge uh, part of any successful program. Uh, I've mentioned it before, but time and energy, you know, you want to be able to offer them time. Uh, so that's a big one. 
Um, and commitments, you know, they're young people. They've got family life, school life, community life maybe, uh, and exploring part-time work. So I think don't assume that they've got all of this time up their sleeve. Um, I think, you know, their time is precious too. So that's really important to consider. Um, I really love this quote. They don't need, uh, sorry, they need and deserve the space and infrastructure to advocate for themselves and the world they want to see. And the youth program is the most important and powerful and effective ways that we can offer that. Okay, and resources there, there's an amazing one that I've drawn from, uh, Keeping It Real by the Ministry of Youth Development. Um, Joe Higgins, a uh, beautiful document that I referenced quite a few times, and the last one about strength-based practice. Thank you so much, Brianna. Um, I've just jotted down heaps and heaps of notes, and I've got a few questions. Huh. Um, but I'd also love to invite everyone on the call to um, drop questions into the chat, or if you'd like to um, have a chat to Brianna, just turn your um, webcam or microphone on and feel free to ask her your question. Um, but I wanted to start off by asking, was was there a particular um, experience that you had when you were uh, younger that drew you into this this work? Was there? A I love that question. Um, yeah, and I hadn't actually mentioned that in the slide. You know, as a young person, I knew I was creative, but I didn't see really successful people around me at the time um, in this field of work. And uh, at the Auckland Art Gallery, actually, we we did a youth program and I actually, I think I felt seen and I felt heard and I think I felt like it was okay to explore these ideas and figure that out. So I think I'm always aware of what that experience was like for me and figuring out who I was as a young person. So I think I, always have that in my mind when I, I'm engaging with youth is, is what that experience is like, you know, right at the peak of leaving childhood and, and entering adulthood. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was like the tools, the um, staff there, the openness, the kind of events and programs we explored as young people. Um, there was a lot of things we we did, but I think the experience was really feeling valued uh, through mm. the lens of arts. And and how did that for you feel different from say being part of you know a school community? How, yeah. how was the the programming that the art gallery put on different for you and and and, yeah. and how you know how did that impact? I think it um I'll go back again to that that strength based practice. So I think you know, the staff involved were really interested in learning about us, you know, learning um, what we liked and what we didn't like uh, and how we wanted to grow up, what we what we wanted to enter um, professionally when, when we left school. I think there was a real sense of exploration um, and figuring out what we were good at. Um, you know, I knew that I loved the arts, but really it was it was talking to these people um, and learning through their jobs as well and what they did at the gallery that I thought actually I feel like I don't I don't have to get this wrong. Um, I'm I'm figuring out you know what uh, values I have and um, what what my strengths are. Um, so that it felt a little bit different in that regard through school, um, mm -hmm. I guess, because you have quite a standardized method of, of learning, you know, it's right or wrong. Um, so it felt open, you know. Um, one of the things I loved that you shared was this idea of uh, collaboration across actually some really quite different um, organizations. So the example yeah. of the skate park was where you basically had um, uh, you know, you had uh, funding partners, you had yep. your community venues involved, you had youth, yep. you, you had a business involved, yeah. artist. Yep. Um, do you have any other examples of um, those types of collaborations? And do you have any tips as well for if people are on the call thinking, oh, we'd love to collaborate with a local business that could help increase the resources we have available yeah. to us. Yeah. How did you go about approaching um, Border Town and getting them in involved? Yeah, I mean, oh, that's such a good question. Um, I think Skate Out East was the real um, prime example of, uh, you guys had an amazing, uh, uh, seminar on placemaking that I watched uh, yesterday and I was so inspired by that and I think what I uh, took away from that is is 
how simple ideas can be. Um, you know, the idea of connecting or making a space a place. I think the skate park uh, being a local to the area. Mm -hmm. um, I really know that this is an area that youth want to hang out in and be seen in. So when Lucy, the creative, came to us, I thought, oh my gosh, okay, they want to paint the boards. That's great. Now let's get them to that place that they feel seen and heard. Mm -hmm. um, so it was honestly a simple conversation with Watertown. We approached them going, hey, we've got these um, uh, amazing creatives involved who want to drive this part of, of the program. Can you offer anything? Uh, it's a long shot, but, you know, you, you um, embody the skate culture in East Auckland and we, we want to go to the skate park. You guys know the space well. What can you do? Um, so it's, it's honestly as simple as reaching out um, and even following up that conversation after the initial um, what if it's an email or an initial phone call, I think being active and and seeking participation because you'll be surprised at how many people might turn around and go, I could offer you this or I could offer you our time. Mm -hmm. um, Border Town were a prime example of being incredibly generous in terms of helping us, you know, get the the pieces themselves, so the trucks and um, but then they donated their time. So we had two uh, of their staff members who were a buyer and a manager, local boys um, who had been to school in the local area and they came to skate with us. So they actually told us what they could offer. Um, mm -hmm. We just put the question out there like, we've got this amazing thing happening. Do you want to be involved? And I think it can be as simple as that, you know, just just um, extending the olive branch to, um, yeah, these different uh, shops, retailers, mm -hmm. um, whatever it may be. Yeah, that that's just it's so yeah it proves the point if you are you know you just have to ask and see what people come back with and I think with youth there's a sense of community right like representing mm -hmm. your community in a new and engaging way and I think there's a lot of openness for people to support that so mm -hmm. I would encourage anyone to just uh, muster any courage in starting whatever conversation they want to um yeah mark out maybe as being the first in their journey mm -hmm. Um, on the subject of space, uh, what tips do you have for people to, you talked earlier on in your presentation around mm. making sure that the space feels safe and welcoming for youth. Do you have yeah. anything that in particular that you do at Tatui or that you, mm. you, you said that, that venues can do to like, practically yeah. make people feel welcome and included and safe in the space that you're yeah. in? Yeah, um, I think responsibility might come into play in that you know being being a space for youth you know mm -hmm. saying hey we have a room for you mm -hmm. um it could be a room you explore whatever idea i think you know the responsibility and the dedication of of offering something um is a huge one that eliminates barriers of youth might not come in to see contemporary art straight away mm -hmm oh, but hey, we've got a beautiful space. What do you want to do? You know, we've got a beautiful wall. Do you want to create a post-it note installation? You know, they might come with their own ideas. And I think that initial outreach could then bridge um, or, or eliminate any barriers. Um, I think asking what they need might be a, a, an important yeah. part in creating an accessible space because you might uh, learn uh, different areas of accessibility you hadn't noticed before about your site. Um, but I think it starts with, yeah, an open space that they can use how mm. they need. I That's such a um, it, fantastic way to get started, which is just saying, hey, we've got some space. Yeah. What do you want to do with it? Because I know from our work, working, we work with Kainga Aura on some free spaces in the CBD. And it's been amazing to see the youth engagement in those spaces. And I think it's because the barrier of cost has been taken away yeah, um, because it's free. So therefore, they can just go in and we've seen kids do music videos there and start up, um, you, you know, dance practice and, and so much good stuff has come from removing the barrier of cost. Absolutely. And so if, if you are a venue and you have the resource available to, you know, not make it, you know, it doesn't have to be free all the time, but free to, a, you know, a group of people that you want to engage with mm. and to say, hey, what do you want to start doing in here? Actually, that can be super powerful. As, Absolutely. As well. I think that's so vital, uh, especially as we kind of come out or 
see what the pandemic looks like now you know we've all had a difficult couple of years mm -hmm. and so connection is is such a huge thing i'm very lucky to do in my job like we all want to connect right mm -hmm. and i think if you can eliminate a barrier for example like cost or transport or whatever just one thing mm -hmm. uh, i think that could be the starting point and then you'll see you know what personalities these youth have what their backgrounds are and they'll decide what they want to do with that space you know whether it's mm -hmm. a music video um they'll bring who they are to that space which mm -hmm. i think is is exactly what you're saying al yeah the, the other thing that really resonated with me with what you shared is this uh, strengths-based approach mm. which like you said is very different to a typical school environment where mm. it's super structured there's a curriculum there's a syllabus yep. this is every every box we have to tick and it's yep. where we're getting you to to say answers mm. uh, and it can probably feel a little bit scary to mm. go in with actually maybe less structure less mm. um you know less you know hard programming and say what is it you want and and what do you want to discover and and yeah. learn while you're here yeah do you have any tips for making that shift to help people for it to be more self-directed for it to be more about exploration mm. for it to be more about learning about well forming identity as well is a, is a big part yeah. of what you talked about yeah that's a good question i think um yeah youth I mean, you don't want to be told what to do all the time. <laughs> and I think I, I, I can say that because I learned that when I was still at, at school, but exploring this internship at, at the art gallery, like learning that I don't, things don't have to be right or wrong. I can actually be in this place of movement and, and navigating um, different outcomes and, and really explore. Um, I think I think as different venues approach different groups and, and they know what people need. Um, I think th for us, for example, we know that art's always going to be a tool. Um, there's so much complexity, but open-endedness with art making. Um, mm -hmm. Not that it has to be a physical thing they make, but art mm -hmm. helps us to connect to wider ideas in the world. So mm -hmm. we always know that we can at least offer the context of art, um, whether it's discussing life or looking at an artwork or connecting them to an artist. I know not everyone has the capacity to do that, but I think it goes back to those beginning questions in the slide of like, what can we offer? What do we want to get out of this? And then I think from there, then you can apply a strength-based uh, practice when you know the parameters of, mm. of your venue and, you, and what you can work within. Yeah, and I think um, to touch on your point around um, bringing in the right people to be part of those programs. So, you know, finding someone that has experience in, in building incredible connections with, yeah. with youth. Yeah. But also um, another thing that that, that I loved uh, to hear you talk about was actually what youth programming can do is providing a much more fully dimensional um, um, representation of, of being an adult because teachers have have to for good reason sort of only give so much of themselves yeah. in the workplace yeah. whereas having these different interactions through a youth program can actually show you know more three-dimensional kind of representations of adults and, and people yeah. can feel free to ask more questions I definitely have experienced that thing where as a teacher you actually learn a lot more about your kids and, and about each other in these different environments that's not so yeah. formal as school. And I think too in school, you know, there's parameters of, of how many adults we're surrounded by. And so there's gonna be a few key ones we might mm. connect with depending on our interests. But I think if we open that up slightly in a program that allows us to dive into our interests you know we get to engage with more adults and kind of have these more like you said three-dimensional experiences mm -hmm. um it kind of just opens the world slightly to them but in a really safe way um knowing that they're not alone but they can kind of foster who they want to be or how they can connect to ideas um yeah i think i think that's the beauty of that that kind of practice is using school as a, a method of of learning but then kind of pushing that slightly further um and and opening the barriers a little bit uh depending on what they're interested in mm. um we're pr pretty much at the um top of our um hour so i just want to say a huge thank you brianna for sharing your experience and heaps of ideas uh, and inspiration that hopefully will 
um, help inspire some of the people on this call or who are watching the recording um, to think about, you know, how they can develop similar programs and engagement strategies. Um, thank you. So thank you. Just, yeah, thank you so much for your time. No, thank you. Um, I really want to thank you, Al, for this opportunity. Um, it was really amazing to kind of uh, be approached by you guys and, and to see what you offer. I think there's some amazing sites. Um, and for anyone who hasn't seen the placemaking um, recording, please check it out. I think uh, there's a lot that can be applied to when thinking about engaging with youth. You know, it can be really mm -hmm. simple. So that may also be of inspiration. Yeah, we, we will um we'll send those resources out to everyone on the call so you've got those links. Hey, thank you so much. Perfect. Are we getting lots of lovely thank yous on the on the chat? Um so uh this is our last community venue learning series for uh, 2023. So thank you to everyone who's been part of the first six ones that we run. We will be probably selling them up again in February. Um and we'll be thinking, having a bit of a think about topics. If you guys have anything you particularly want us to cover, do get in touch, either um, email us or, uh, or drop us a link on our Facebook page. We'd love to hear from you. And um, well, happy Christmas if we don't see from you before. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.